In this video, we will discuss nerve modeling techniques in order to create this modern looking uh, table uh, that will go into a living room. Um, so let's begin. And uh, again, every time that we start a new uh, modeling project, we should analyze what we're modeling uh, to get an idea of what, what's going to be our approach towards solving this problem. Um, so, uh, you know, the top of this it, it's, will be a quite simple solution because it's just a cylinder. Uh, but it's the base that it, it could be a little problematic and uh, you will have to try maybe a couple things to see what works the best. Uh, I'm going to be using a uh, lofting uh, through uh, uh, curves and surfaces and see if I can create this uh, kind of like S uh, looking table that we have right here. So uh, let's see if my approach works for this. Um, so um, based on my analysis, I, I saw that basically the bottom and the top um, of this were basically uh, an S shape, and then it was kind of twisted a little bit, uh, either the, the the bottom or the top. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, actually I'm gonna use the text uh, rather than trying to draw my own S shape. Uh, so I'm just gonna create uh, right here my options, and I'm gonna be using uh, this font uh, based on the research that I was doing. It's just it, it looks like a good solution to the type of shape that the, sh the table has. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. Again, it's going to be 90 degrees on the uh, x-axis. <coughs> then the next step is uh, basically going to be making a duplicate of this and moving it up. Okay. Then to make a loft out of two different uh, spline objects, just basically going to select them both and do a loft. And it's going to create a surface based on on those two shapes. So in order to create um, this twisting, I'm just going to uh, take either the top or the bottom. Uh, I'm going to modify it, making sure that it's centered, and just rotate it. <coughs> and again, with this step of, uh, of modeling, you always remember there's a dependency between the original splines that you use to create the surfaces and the surfaces themselves. So if I twist this, it's going to follow. And again, I have to make sure that um, it's not too much because the, the geometry seems to be collapsing in itself. So that, that looks pretty good. Um, and it looks like a good solution. But then the problem that I'm having at this moment is that uh, all of these edges are pretty sharp, and even uh, and the top and the bottom are basically open. I could basically select my S and just uh, do a planar and, and cap it on the top, but I'm still going to have uh, these uh, kind of sharp edges, and it's going to take away from the natural approach that I, that I want my model to have. So... Uh, instead of, of keeping it like this, what I'm actually going to do is take the surface that I created and make it into a polygon. <coughs> so to do that, I'm going to go into Convert under Modify and then uh, change Nerf to Polygons or Convert Nerf to Polygons. Then I'm going to click on the box to see the options. I just want to make sure that I have Quad selected and you know I want to make sure that it has enough geometry uh, for the conversion, so I'm just going to change that to 300, and then I'm just going to apply it. Alright, so it looks like it did a really nice conversion. Uh, right now it looks a little blocky, but nothing that a previous smoothing can't solve. And it seems like our conversion has a couple of issues, uh, especially in areas where uh, it looks like there's um, edges that are way too close to each other. Um, so the first thing that I gotta do is clean up my geometry a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, delete 
edge vertex all of this extra geometry that I'm not gonna need so I just need to go around and select all of them and I'm uh, I'm loop selecting by pressing on my uh, left arrow on my uh, keyboard and deleting the edge of the vertices by just uh, pressing G since I already selected the tool once uh, and again, are the, those sharp edges, those lines that are too close to each other are the ones that are going to give us trouble, so those are the ones that I'm trying to get rid of right here. Um, so, again, I'm just going to do another preview and see if the one that helped. And there's definitely an improvement on the geometry, I might maybe have to address some here. Um, Maybe the one in the middle of these two need to go. And let's see how that works out. So that's pretty nice. <coughs> the next thing that I need to address is that uh, with these models that are kind of based on, on splines, uh, or at least the problem with splines is that uh, even though they look close, they're not. Um, so basically, I'm gonna have an issue here where on one of these sides, basically my geometry is not really um, it's open, and if I try to cap the top at the bottom, it's basically going to do some funky stuff with the geometry. So I need to find out. Um, where is that open shape? And it seems like it's on the other side over here. Not that one. So it is this side over here. <coughs> Alright, so now what we need to do... I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I want to select uh, both vertices that are open and I'm just going to basically... I'm going to... Uh, weld them by using um, the the merge uh, command so now that I've done that <coughs> it's basically one piece <coughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that with every single vertice So that seemed to work, and in order to prove to uh, or to check to make sure that this actually worked, I'm gonna go ahead and cap this object, and both the top and the bottom have been capped. <coughs> now the next thing that I need to do is to make sure that I connect some of these. Um, points here because if I try and do a previous move there's not enough geometry in there to kind of sustain that so uh, I need to make sure that I, I create that for it <coughs> so I'm gonna go ahead select my vertices and start uh, connecting these components um, like this just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pause this video for a second. I'm gonna connect all of my points and then I'll be back. Alright, so I went ahead and connected all of the edges at the top and at the bottom. <coughs> and then I just uh, made sure I tested that it was actually uh, the top and the bottom were not collapsing. So now that everything's working fine. I need to add a little bit more of uh, edge loops right here to make sure that my edges are still, I mean, yeah, the edges are, um, they have a little bit of curve, but they're not necessarily this curved, or at least my reference doesn't show that they have a little bit of an edge. So I'm going to use the insert uh, 
edge loop tool. <coughs> Again, just add a little bit of sharpness, but not nothing too crazy. to the other side over here pretty much do the same thing and then just a little bit at the bottom all right seems like I have a little bit of an issue here uh, it's probably one of my components that I connected just did the wrong thing here let me just kind of fix this real quick and just uh, connect my components and then I'm going to use my split polygon tool to just kind of finish this loop that I had going on here make sure that that's working fine alright let's just make sure that's alright so no big problem right there um, Alright, so I don't really need my original NURB object uh, for this because I already um, kind of get into the uh, end of this right now. Uh, but one thing I like to do right now is uh, make sure that I center the pivot. Um, I also want to create a cylinder that's going to go on the top of it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I just need a primitive. Uh, primitive, I just need a cylinder. I'm just going to go ahead and create that and uh, now I'm basically going to align it to this guy so I want to go into the align tool and just uh, align it right here and then I can just go into my um, side and just kind of move it up so it's right on top of that it's back to my perspective just going to make sure it doesn't have any subdivisions on the cap I'm going to increase the number of subdivisions that it have um, I can also let's see I'm just going to select this face this face <coughs> Then I'm going to go in uh, bevel these edges, so I need to convert them first. Uh, select convert two edges. Then I need to do a bevel. So that actually worked pretty well, and I just want to add maybe another segment there. That's pretty nice. And uh, the last touch that I want to add is that if I look at my reference, this is actually a little bit kind of squished uh, right here. Uh, there's a little bit of a squeeze right here in the middle. So I want to be able to add that. And to be able to do that, <coughs> I'm going to go into animation, uh, create the formers, lattice. And I want to have a cage uh, lattice that I can actually uh, use to organically just kind of modify and squeeze in uh, this area. So I want to have lattice on the top, on the bottom, and at the center. So three divisions works great. So I'm just going to click on create. Then I want to go into my lattice points. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale it so it's actually creating that little bit of a squeeze right there and again based on my reference it's kind of like not necessarily on the center so I can actually just kind of move this down a bit and that works perfect so uh, um, and again I may not want to have this lattice uh, uh, connected to my geometry so I can always go back into modify sorry edit delete by type and delete the history so that way it's not dependent on it and uh, the last thing that I can do again just to make sure that uh, that all things are organized I can actually select this create a layer for my table Oops. 
save that. Um, I can actually go into my outliner and kind of group a couple things. So just like I did with my couch, I can go into my top view for and just kind of create a, a spline circle here. And just kind of centered here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and uh, let's see. So it's kind of at the ground, so that works perfect. And I'm just going to rename this, name it uh, CTRL for control, then table. <coughs> then uh, go into my outliner and pretty much group them with my control table by selecting them and just middle mouse clicking and just dragging into the table. Um, another thing that I can do at this point is, of course, just freeze, transform. Uh, my control so everything's at zeros and one and again now that I have this I can just move it whatever if I need to and always go back to my origin point by doing this if I need to um, and if I scale it it's gonna do it right from the bottom so it always gonna stay in formal and uh, that way we're keeping our scene organized making sure that we can hide it if we need to if we have too many things in our scene and things like that I want to make sure to add this to my layer as well so it's hidden so um, again uh, in this video we covered how we created this the base of this uh, table by using uh, by lofting uh, to um, uh, text splines and then we proceeded to convert it into a polygon <coughs> and we fixed the geometry a little bit uh, and after doing that we made sure that our edges were somewhat sharp and we used the lattice to actually create a little bit of squeeze right here at the bottom and this is just a simple cylinder and then at the end I just created a control to make sure that uh, everything's organized in my scene uh, and again everything's in a layer and it's grouped in my outliner so um, I hope this helped thank you for watching